Hey everyone, I know what you're thinking. Boy, the lack of content on this channel the last few months sure has been disappointing. So, rather than disappear into the ether, today I wanted to share with you all some things that disappointed me. I am a staunch believer in the idea that no potential is way better than wasted potential. So the following are things that I initially liked, from either their previous iterations or premise, and thought showed promise only for them to let me down in the long run. Most of the examples are a bit dated or I didn't feel were worth making a solo video on, so I thought it would be a good idea to get my thoughts out like this. But with that, let's start with some anime. I actually enjoyed Roroni Kenshin and can probably sing praises on it all day, but dear god is this a particularly difficult case of separating the artist from his work? When you come to know that the guy can only get a boner for children? Specifically within the range of uh... Elementary and middle school, which he was caught with a shit ton of pictures of, so, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but hey, you know, Heart of the Sword is still cool, and um, it's probably still okay to like Roroni Kenshin. Plus, the Hokkaido arc is still being serialized. Yeah, he still has a job. Um, the dude apparently got off really fucking easy, and was only fined about $1,900 USD for the whole ordeal, so, um... Bleach is the story of a hot-blooded boy who slowly loses his personality in favor of many different outfits across ten years until everyone, including the author and editors, got tired of it. <laughs> I actually don't know why this is on the list. I thought Darling in the Franks was fine. It's just a shame that it was only 15 episodes. If it had another season to round out character motivations and flesh out the overarching plot, then I, I'm sure it would have wrapped up nicely. So... I guess I'm just disappointed that I didn't get to see a full anime. This show had a superb staff, well-established lore from its first series, and a fantastic first half, so for all intents and purposes, it should have been a slam dunk. But what actually ended up happening is that they dropped the ball so hard, it actually breached the Earth's core. It has been seven years, and I am still mad. In 100 million and 2,000 more, I will still be mad. I will start by saying that for better or worse, Crunchyroll has done a lot in the effort to make anime more accessible to a worldwide audience. But it's been over a decade since they've been bringing licensed anime to us, and they've barely evolved in their practices. Like, what, what the fuck is this? Even ignoring the fact that this is an American-produced cartoon and has people of questionable nature on its staff, I think it's particularly despicable that they've opted to sweep any and all news of it under the rug. No one knows if this thing is still in production, or how much they wasted on expenses for it if it's actually been cancelled. This situation was made even worse when a year ago after being acquired by Sony, Funimation had cut ties with Crunchyroll, leaving them with even less variety of anime than before. Not to mention the massive layoffs that were just forgotten about for some reason. It really makes me wonder what the fuck you're doing with everyone's money at this point. But um... If you want to sponsor me to say nice things about you instead, I'll still take that deal. I mean, everyone else has, so why not? Uh, but speaking of Sony... I don't get you, Sony. I'm not really sure what you want anymore. You know, you fucked up with your electronics department, you tried cell phones twice and screwed up both times, and now your movies are on Spider-Man life support. Your only success in recent memory has been with your game subsidiary, and you've started screwing with that too. You were a pillar for Weeb Gaming for over two console generations, only to start turning your back on them through censoring or outright denying publishers. I truly do not understand this decision. Why would you needlessly shoot yourself in the leg like this? Do you honestly think that improving nothing but your hardware, while failing to keep up a proper platform for your player base will pan out? Give me my anime titties! You Tokyo Ghoul actually has a pretty interesting premise, showcasing a sobering depiction of what would happen if a conventional shounen protagonist is put up against people unmoving in their conflicting endeavors, inevitably causing them to become disillusioned and broken while trying to maintain his ideologies. Sorry, I got that confused with Hunter x Hunter. What I meant to say is that it is a compelling depiction of a protagonist struggling with his ideals in order to protect what's most important to him even at the cost of letting his body disintegrate in the process. Sorry! That's Fate's Day Night! Okay, okay. 
Tokyo Ghoul is about a half-ghoul who lives in Tokyo, attempting to find peace with his socially unaccepted predisposition, while desperately clinging on to whatever humanity he has left in the face of great adversity. No wait, that's Kimono Jihen. In reality, Tokyo Ghoul was a series that relied very much on the radical evolution of its protagonist and setting, only for it to eventually turn into a literal clown show. By the end, nothing was accomplished, almost no one important died, and one of the two that did was immediately replaced by a copy-paste who even has the same name. There was no meaning to be extracted. All the pretense and hints at things to come that were constantly being thrown in your face went nowhere. This entire fucking story is pointless, even more so with the anime, which attempted to condense 322 chapters into 44 episodes. This fucking story couldn't commit to a single goddamn thing. Kaneki couldn't even commit to No Nut November. Tokyo Ghoul is the most successful waste of time I have ever encountered. When Silent Hills was canned, I finally felt I could empathize with people who are pro-life. Something that by all accounts should have been amazing was dangled in front of us and then was just... gone, thanks to the whims of its facilitators. It was so sad that someone who I hadn't spoken to in years but had a single shared point of interest with this series contacted me just to express his frustrations. But who knows, Death Stranding appears to be pretty divisive among people who have played it. There's no guarantee that if Silent Hills had finished production, it wouldn't have received similar reception. Diablo 3 is a game where you fight through hordes of the damned, gaining gear until you finally reach the game's most memorable boss, Leoric. And then the rest of the game happens. Everything. No. Uh, erased made me wish I could erase the anime from my memory. <laughs> Uh, the only thing it accomplished was erasing four hours of my time. <laughs> Any of these jokes hitting? Any of these jokes hitting? Okay, here's a more recent one. Uh, Indivisible. I had high expectations for this game since it was coming from Lab Zero, and it was clear that they were taking much inspiration from Valkyrie Profile, only to be sorely disappointed by pretty much every aspect of this game that was not audio or visual. I found it really strange they decided to market this game as an RPG when in fact it barely has any recognizable features conventionally belonging to one. To borrow the words of someone who expressed my feelings better, Indivisible to RPGs is the equivalent of eating the bone from the steak. It just has the smell of meat on it. You can argue that performing combos is fun, but not when the most efficient method of approaching the game is spamming the same moves over and over, Especially when the lack of a combo list incentivizes this behavior. This, combined with the fact gimmick fights seemingly only exist to be an annoyance, make for a really mind-numbing experience. And you quickly come to the realization that the combat, one of the game's main selling points, is actually pointless because you gain nothing from it. Mind you, I've only covered a small but significant portion of Indivisible's problems. Everything else about it, from its story and pacing, to its platforming and functionality of most of its characters ranges from bad to mediocre at best. Indivisible is a very pretty but incredibly shallow, substanceless game. It is so fundamentally flawed that no number of patches or balance changes can possibly fix it, and in no universe is it worth $40. Just give me a port of Valkyrie profile already. And lastly, when I had a child, I truly wasn't sure if I was ready to accept the responsibility of raising another life. But seeing my son grow into such a talented young man eased all my apprehension and filled me with a sense of joy I didn't think I was capable of experiencing. And somewhere down the line, things turned sour. Circumstances would not see our lives, let alone rearing, to be an easy task. That's when I started to see an anger build inside of me. That same pointless aggression that robbed me of my sense for all my youth and took me decades to get a handle on. It was scary how much he reminded me of myself. I knew if he didn't change his ways, his life would only be full of sadness and hardship, just like me, just like his grandfather. So I did everything I could, everything I thought I had to, in order to steer him away from that path. But it only caused more problems and 
instead of easing his worries, just drained him of his happiness and vitality. What I thought was the right thing to do only caused him more pain, and inadvertently continued him down a difficult path. Watching all the same notes being hit in his life while realizing I stumbled into the same mistakes as my own parents was an incredibly humbling experience. It filled me with an overwhelming sense of powerlessness and disappointment. But I'm not disappointed in my son. I'm proud of him. I have always been proud of him. I'm disappointed that he was forced to make concessions for the sake of my pride. I'm disappointed I couldn't give him the life I wanted to give him. But mostly, I'm disappointed in myself for not being better. I only hope he can learn to be happy again, and maybe, someday, come to understand how I felt when he was born. For me, that was the moment I truly felt my life had meaning. I love you, son. My dad wrote this for me. And frankly, I'm disappointed in him for it. Putting aside the fact the composition is awful, that it's incredibly tried and broad enough to be applicable to many different people while also making a blatant appeal at my empathy, the whole thing just tells me that my dad either knows very little about me or is just being willfully ignorant. Because I am neither unhappy nor feel that he's ever let me down. Now, it may be true that my parents both purposely raised me to be a borderline sociopath who only cares about anime and video games, but I've still managed to set my own standards for happiness and success, for which I've met almost all of. So it's honestly a bit upsetting that after giving me the tools to achieve these things, my dad still thinks he hasn't done enough for me. But, um, thanks anyway, Dad. I appreciate the effort. And, um, I love you too. Or whatever. And that's all we got for today. Thanks again to all of you who decided to stick around, and I hope this filled the void even if just a bit. But if you're looking for more, I've got a Discord now. Wow, hey, check that out. Here you can make fun of how I don't move my mouth and have bad opinions to your heart's content, with the added benefit of holding me hostage to producing content more consistently. If that doesn't work for you, I've also got a Twitter that I really only use to follow artists. But uh, with that, I will see you all next time. I also don't like Studio Trigger.